The editor of the Wall Street Journal op-ed page went on the Sunday talk shows this weekend to talk about Seattle recently raising their minimum wage to the highest in the country, which is $15 an hour. So listen to his rebuttal of that policy. I call this the argument from narcissism. When you raise the cost of labor, you just cost price a lot of people out of the labor market, particularly the young, the least skilled, teenagers, people who want to go in and start on that, get on that basic bottom rung of the economic ladder and move up. Look, I've worked for the minimum wage, two bucks an hour back in the 70s. I had jobs that, you know, what did I learn? I learned to show up on time, I learned certain skills, and I learned I didn't want to make the minimum wage for the rest of my life, so I better get an get education. You see why I call that the argument from narcissism? It's all about him. I've heard this argument so many times before. Bill O'Reilly makes the same argument. Well, you know, when I started out, I was working a minimum wage job for one summer before my dad got me an internship somewhere, and then I ended up working my way up the company. The idea is, because I had a minimum wage job and worked my way up, everybody should work their way up from a minimum wage job. So it should be really, really shitty pay. You notice the gigantic fallacy in that argument? Not everybody is going to work their way up. And you wouldn't want everybody to work their way up from a minimum wage job. Why? Because we absolutely need minimum wage workers in the country. In the sense that we need people to do those jobs. If everybody worked their way up, not everybody could be a manager. An economy can't function if everybody's a manager, or if everybody's a CEO. Then nobody's there to do the actual work. It's amazing that they don't piece these things together. So they want to blame people and say, you know what, you should work your way up, it's on you, buddy. But then they don't take their argument to its logical conclusion, which is that even if everybody in the country woke up tomorrow and did exactly what you're saying, the economy would fall apart, the country wouldn't exist. We'd go into a depression because, again, we need people to do those jobs. So what progressives are saying and what rational people are saying is, here's an idea. How about, since we know that those people have to exist to do those jobs, we at least pay them enough so that they can live? Yeah, I know. We're, we're crazy, right? That's a crazy idea. That if you work a full-time job, you should make enough money to survive without having to run to Medicaid and food stamps to get by. And also, their, their entire belief system is this massive contradiction. Because they say at the same time as this, uh, we're in favor of small government. Okay, but wait, wait, wait. You would get smaller government if you raise the minimum wage. Because then food stamps and Medicaid, those programs would shrink because less people would need to go to them. Because they'd be getting enough money from the job that they're working at. <laughs> So they have a massive contradiction. They say, no, we want to cut Medicaid and food stamps and the other social safety net programs, and we also don't want to raise the minimum wage. Well, then people can't live, dipshit. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Just have their kids starve in the middle of the street? Is that what you want to do? But they don't think it through. And if they did think it through, they might not even care. But that's why that argument is so disingenuous. It's so ridiculous. And think about the other point that they always make. Well, when you raise the cost of labor, if you raise the minimum wage, what you're doing is you're pricing other workers out of the market. Think about how dumb that is. Think about how dumb that is. Because you know what that means? Uh, he's saying, well, obviously full employment is the number one thing we should care about. That's the number one economic indicator that we should care about. Is it really? Is it really? Because, you know, we can achieve full employment tomorrow. We could have 0% unemployment tomorrow. Well, how do you do that, Kyle? A little thing called slavery. It's true. You could have 0% unemployment if you have slavery, because everybody who's not working, who's unemployed, go work for free. 0% unemployment. And again, that's his argument is, well, look, you're pricing people out of the market. You know, if you raise the minimum wage. Yeah, you know, in Bangladesh, they, uh, they're taking your advice. They're saying, look, we don't want to uh, have people not working, so pay everybody like two bucks. Actually, two bucks would probably be a lot for that area. Pay everybody like 57 cents, you know? And then a lot of people will work for no money whatsoever. I mean, it's just, they're such bad arguments, man. They're such bad arguments, you know. And then also, what was he saying? Oh, 1960s or 1970s or whatever. I was making this amount of money per hour with the minimum wage. Motherfucker, the 1968 minimum wage would be equal in today's dollars to about $10.40 an hour. 
okay? So today, the minimum wage is worth less than it was in 1968. So without even realizing it, you're arguing to raise the minimum wage. They're just so silly. If you were to chain minimum wage to productivity, it'd be about $22 an hour right now, okay? If you were to just make it a living wage, it'd be about $12 an hour right now. Look, it's not that hard, and people aren't unreasonable. If you give them a little bit of a boost to the point where they're making a living wage, they'll be happy as hell! But they're even against that minimum, minimum change in the right direction. And it's gross, and it's disingenuous, and it's totally unintellectual to the point of being ridiculous.